Alrighty, let's do this preview thing, shall we? Uh, good morning, Europe. So, there are matinee games tomorrow. There's at least one I know of, so... Uh, happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody. I realize I wore Minnesota for the review tonight. But that's green, and this is green. This is my only St. Patrick's Day jersey. And the reason that I ordered this one uh, with Minnesota on it is because the logo at least suits the green. So there you go. Happy St. Patrick's Day to all of those who may have a hangover. So... All right, first up, we have Vancouver and Dallas. So this is one of those classic matchups where it's two teams I cheer for against each other. Um, as Dallas needs the win, I, I would prefer to see Dallas win the game. But either way, um, Vancouver's 29-32-10 overall. Dallas is 37-29-5 over their last 10. Vancouver's 3-5-2, and, and of course, their last game was a shootout loss against New Jersey. Whereas Dallas is 7-3 and, and they're coming off of a regulation loss. Away from home, Vancouver's 13, 19, and 5. At home, Dallas is 21, 12, and 2. So the home record definitely favors Dallas, but uh, again, um, some some concerns that creep in with Dallas. Uh, you know, St. Louis gets the win today, so now Dallas has to win this one, get back into third third place in the division. Whereas for Vancouver, there's not really any pressure on them, so that kind of leads to some favorable situations for some of these teams that are sitting outside the playoffs. Uh, scoring over their last 10 games, Bo Horvat, three goals, three assists. Josh Levo, thank you, Toronto, two goals, two assists. Pedersen with a goal and four assists for him. Uh, Besser, two goals, six assists. Pearson, two goals and an assist. Biega, a goal and five assists. And Stetcher with an assist. <clears throat> As was said after last night's game, we'll see if uh, Pedersen Peterson can get things going uh, with that goal he had last night. Uh, in against Dallas, Dallas is one of the best defensive teams in the league, so it'll be a good test for that. Um, on the goaltending side, I expect Markstrom because he's playing a ton. Uh, he's 3-3-2 three, three, and two over their last 10 with a 9.27 save percentage. Demko's 0-2 <clears throat> with an 880 save percentage. They should play Demko here. Obviously, being the middle of the night, no goaltenders have been confirmed. They should play Demko. Dallas won the first matchup between these teams, which means they're not done playing each other after tomorrow. On the Dallas side of things, uh, Rupe Hintz with six goals in his last ten games. He's really emerging as a fantastic rookie in and of, in and of himself. Um, Tyler Sagan, a goal and seven assists for him. Jamie Benn, four goals, two assists. Roddick Foxa with three goals. Uh, Radulov, six goals, three assists. Haskinen with three assists. And Essa Lindell, the number one ice time getter. He's got one assist in the last ten games played for Dallas. Goaltenders. Really depends here, doesn't it? Bishop's still listed as day-to-day. -day. If Bishop's ready, he'll play. Hudobin over their last 10 games is 2-2 two and two with a 9.35 save percentage. If they can give him goal support, he'll win them games. But it's a matter of getting that goal support. So Dallas really needs this game. I will likely be cheering for Dallas because, again, if Vancouver wins the game, they're not going to make the playoffs. It may bump them up in the standings a little bit. Uh, and this is something I have to explain to people that, yes, when it comes to teams they cheer for playing against each other, I look at the standings and I say, okay, this team needs this, and then I, I cheer accordingly. If both teams are in playoff positions, I just sit back and enjoy the ride for the most part. Um, I know when Dallas and Vancouver have played each other in the playoffs, I've really enjoyed that tremendously because then whoever wins, I still win. And usually those series don't get really nasty like the 2011 Stanley Cup Final did. That was just ugly. Uh, next up, Islanders. So New York Islanders coming off of a loss and looking vulnerable over the last few weeks. They're in against a team that's looked vulnerable themselves, fighting to get back into it, and it's Minnesota. Uh, so Minnesota can go a long way to getting themselves back into uh, the playoffs with a win tomorrow. <clears throat> at home against New York Islanders. The Islanders are 41, 23, and 7. Minnesota's 34, 30, and 8. Last 10 games, the Islanders are 5 and 5. They lost their last game. Minnesota's 5, 3, and 2, and they won their last game. Away from home, the Islanders are 19, 12, and 3. At home, Minnesota's 15, 15, and 6. So if you look at the scoring over the last 10 games, Anders Lee with 5 goals, Barzell with 5 assists. Uh, Nelson with two goals, two assists. Bailey with only a goal and three assists. 
Clutterbox three assists, Pollock with a goal and two assists, and Devon Taves with a goal and an assist to round things out for the Islanders. Uh, I expect Leonard here because Grace started today. Grace is four and three in their last ten games with a 9.29 save percentage. Leonard's one and two with an 8.90 save percentage. So he'll be uh, likely getting the start tomorrow, and we'll see if Leonard can reverse things from how it was going before the injury, where it looked like he was starting to get into more pedestrian numbers. On the Minnesota side of things, scoring in their last 10 games, Stahl with two goals, six assists, Greenway with three assists, Donato, four goals, four assists. He looks like he's getting hot again. Aberg with a goal and two assists, Eric Fair, two goals, three assists, Brodeen has a, a four assists, and Ryan Suter, a goal and three assists. On the goaltending side, do you keep playing Dubnik just because you, you need to get into the playoffs and he's your better goaltender? He's 5-3-1 in their last 10 with a 9-17 save percentage. Staylock has an overtime loss to his record over their last 10 games with a 9-23 save percentage. So um, they could start Staylock here, uh, but at home against the Islanders, you know, I, I honestly, I, I would be tempted to come back with Dubnik. Uh, Dubnik's proven himself to be a workhorse in the past. And for the Islanders, they have won the only meeting between these teams this year. Uh, this is, of course, the second and final meeting. And when you look at their records, Minnesota's really got to fix that home record. Uh, it's been it's been an issue recently. And it is a part of the reason why they're not in the playoffs, much like the next preview uh, that's coming up, the next, next game anyways, uh, will also feature a team that needs to play better at home. Um, yeah, you look at some of the teams that are in the playoffs, really good home record or an excellent away record. And if you're mediocre in both, you're likely sitting on the outside looking in. Next up, Jersey. In against Colorado. This is a game of curiosity. And and I, I have some genuine curiosity about this. So New Jersey comes through. Uh, they beat Edmonton. An Edmonton Oilers team that desperately needs points. They win in a shootout against Vancouver. Gutsy effort for a team that is made up of an almost entirely American Hockey League players right now, it would seem. Um, just the fact that he's sure and Hall are out, if you don't count anything else, that's huge. And then you count the fact that Brat's out. Yes, but Brad have been playing very well. Uh, it's it's a long list of guys who are hurt, right? They're 27-36-9 overall, whereas Colorado's 30-29-12. and 12, Or Colorado's won 30 out of 71 games. It's been, it's been a rough year, rough year for Colorado. In their last 10, the New Jersey Devils are 3-6-1. They've won two in a row. Uh, over their last 10, Colorado's 4-5-1. They've lost two in a row. Away from home, the Devils have hit double digits and wins, which at least it looks better than eight, right? They're 10-24-3 and three now uh, away from home, whereas at home, the Colorado Avalanche are 15-14-6. and six. Again, much like Minnesota, this is part of the reason they're not in the playoffs. Their, their home record hasn't been good enough. And with New Jersey coming in, that would be an opportunity, you would think, to make some hay. But Vancouver failed to do so. So did Edmonton. So we'll see if New Jersey brings that tough road show in against uh, the Colorado Avalanche. And can Tangrady get another assist or maybe a goal uh, to go with the assist he got the other night? Over their last 10 games, Coleman started picking it up again. He's at three goals, two assists. Zajac, three goals, two assists as well. Rooney, who's been a story. Four goals and two assists. Agostino, who's been also a story. Two goals, four assists for New Jersey. So there are some good stories here to end off the season for the Devils. Green, four assists. And Connor Carrick with five assists as well. Goaltenders, I kind of expect Schneider here, but either way, Schneider's 2-2-1 two, two and one in their last 10 with a 9-16 save percentage. Blackwood's 1-4 and four with a 9-0-4 save percentage. Colorado did win the meeting these teams had in New Jersey earlier this year. Um... Scoring over the last 10 games for Colorado, McKinnon, 6 goals, 6 assists. Soderberg with 4 assists. Rontanen, 6 goals, 3 assists. Kerfoot with a goal and 3 assists. Jost, a goal and an assist for him. Wilson with 2 assists, so Colin Wilson, um, a guy you're kind of looking for more production from, some support for your your, your top guys. Uh, Gerard, a goal and 2 assists. And Zadorov with 2 goals and an assist to round up the scoring for Colorado. Grubauer, it's tempting to go with Grubauer because his numbers have been better. Uh, Varlamov is 2-3-1 and one in their last 10 with an 899 save percentage. Grubauer is 2-2 two two with a 965 save percentage. Yeah, it's been it's been a good story lately for Grubauer and not so much for Varlamov. So 
That $5.9 million a year contract comes to an end for Semyon Varlamov on July 1st. And the way this season has gone, I don't know that you could realistic, realistically expect a raise for him. It's going to be very interesting to see where he goes if Colorado tries to keep him and how much money he makes next year. That's going to be an interesting story to tell for sure. Uh, next up, St. Louis, the Blues, 37-27-7, in against the hapless, uh, crashing Buffalo Sabres, who are 30-32-9. And, and it's been... It's been Kind of, kind of rough lately for Buffalo, um, and that's pretty much an understatement since November, really. Uh, four, four, and two is the record for St. Louis over their last ten. They won their last game. Buffalo's one, eight, and one over their last ten. They've lost four in a row away from home. St. Louis is twenty, twelve, and five at home. Buffalo's nineteen, twelve, and four uh, over their last ten games. St. Louis O'Reilly's now got two goals, three assists. Bozak also has two goals, three assists. Hey, check it out. Maroon also has two goals, three assists in their last 10 games. Thomas, two goals and five assists. Oscar Sundquist, two goals and an assist. Dunn, three goals, two assists in their last 10 games. And Colton Pareko, five assists in their last 10 games. So uh, the depth scoring is there. David Perron's return seemed to help them as well today. We'll see if he's a, a factor tomorrow. I expect Allen, because Bennington started today, and this is a, a team that really struggles to score. Bennington's 3-2 in their last 10 with a 9.22 save percentage. Jake Allen is 1-2-2 two two with a 9.28 save percentage. On the Buffalo side of things, scoring in their last 10, Skinner, a goal and three assists. He had a goal tonight. Uh, Sherry, three goals, three assists. Rodriguez, four assists. Gergensen's a goal and two assists. Reinhardt, a goal and three assists. Montour, two goals, two assists. Ristolainen, two assists. It's pretty much a team-wide malaise when it comes to the, the Buffalo Sabres. Um, Skinner, he tends to go on these hot streaks. He may very well be going on another one. It, it, it is too late at this stage, but we'll see if he can come up with a goal or two against the St. Louis Blues tomorrow night. Uh, starting goaltender, I expect Hutton because Olmark started today. Hutton's 0-3-1 in their last 10 with an 899 save percentage. Olmark's 1-5 in their last 10 with an 890 save percentage. That that goaltending just they haven't been it, yeah it's been it's been team wide, there really isn't any one thing to look at with Buffalo and say well, this is what's been struggling for them over the last month, it is a a team wide uh, issue that's been seemingly getting worse day by day, um, and and game by game St Louis won this matchup in St Louis, I don't have a whole lot of reason to think that St Louis won't win this one as well. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see how this works out because games do sometimes go the way that we don't expect them to, like the Ottawa game tonight, for instance. I don't think anybody expected that. Next up, Philly and Pittsburgh. Yes, the Battle of Pennsylvania. And these two teams don't like each other. I don't expect them to like each other tomorrow. And even though Buffalo is in a position, or Buffalo, Philadelphia is in a position where they're they're not going to make it, really the, the odds of making it are pretty small now. Um, they're, they're not going to go into Pittsburgh and give any less of an effort. Uh, they're 34-29-8. The Pittsburgh Penguins are 39-24-9. So the Pittsburgh Penguins definitely have the better record between the two. Over their last 10, however, Philadelphia 6-3-1. They've lost two in a row. Uh, Pittsburgh 7-2-1, and, and of course, they lost today at home against St. Louis. Uh, on the road, Philadelphia 16-15-4 at home. Pittsburgh 21-13-2. That 13... That's that one loss today. Um, we'll see if they can shake that off and beat their cross-day rivals in uh, in tomorrow's matchup. Um, over their last 10 games, Voracek has four goals and eight assists for the Flyers. Patrick, one goal, six assists. Van Riemsdyk, nine goals, three assists. He's playing very well. Uh, Giroux, three goals, 12 assists. Konechny, four goals, four assists. Gostas Bear, one goal, five assists. And Gudis with a goal and three assists, suddenly showing some scoring that... Uh, he had earlier this year, too. He was one of the higher-scoring defensemen for them earlier in the season. Um, over the last 10 games, he's been able to play. Uh, Hart is 0-1, and, and of course, Talbot's played as well. Hart, Hart and Elliott are listed as the goalies on daily faceoff. It could very well be Talbot and Hart, Talbot and uh, Elliott. It'll be this way till the end of the year. Uh, Hart's got an 871 save percentage in that one game he played. <clears throat> Elliott's 5-2-1 over their last 10 with a 907 save percentage. 
I figure they go with Elliott here. We'll see. Over their last 10 games, Crosby, 7 goals, 10 assists. Did somebody say playoffs? Gensel, 8 goals, 5 assists. Malkin, 2 goals and 6 assists. Hornquist, 2 goals, 4 assists. Simone, who had a goal today, he has a goal and 3 assists in their last 10 games. Schultz with 6 assists. And Dumoulin, the only defenseman that shows us having a goal in their last 10 games played. And that's the only point he has over those 10 games as well. Uh, goaltenders, your guess is as good as mine. Murray didn't necessarily have a great start today, so does he start tomorrow? Or do they put in DeSmith because DeSmith's numbers are just generally better? Murray 6-2-1 over their last 10 with a 924 save percentage. DeSmith had that shutout, of course. His save percentage with the shutout and today combined, 974 over a 10-game period. So um, overall, I don't think Pittsburgh can necessarily go wrong. Murray is usually good at having the bounce back games. DeSmith's been pretty solid when called upon. Yeah, this is going to be an interesting matchup. Philly has won two out of three matchups between themselves and Pittsburgh this year. So there'll be the right amount of dislike and 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 uh, mistrust between one another. Referees are probably going to keep a close eye on this one early. You may see a bunch of cheap-looking penalties early where you're like, that's not a penalty. Just in case the NHL's referees are like, hey, we got to watch this one. This one could get out of control fast. Uh, if this game goes to a 4 nothing lead one way or the other, whether it's Philly or Pittsburgh, I would expect some fisticuffs at that point. All right, next up, Florida. The unlikely Florida Panthers. Sorry, I got an itch in my eye again. Uh, Florida's in against Anaheim. And Anaheim's been pretty solid over the last month. That being said, they're also out of it. Now, Florida's out of it. They just don't seem to realize it. They're 32-27-12 now. Uh, they're 4-2-4 four, four over their last 10. They've won four in a row. On the road, they're now 14-15-6. So it's been a successful road trip, and they're trying to make it even more successful at the expense of the Anaheim Ducks. The Ducks are 29-35-9. They're 5-5 five five in their last 10. They won their last game. Uh, at home, they're 15-13-8. So the numbers, it, it's tough to say because 15 wins out of 36 games at home 14 wins out of 35 games on the road. It's kind of one of those games where somebody has to win. And yet, the records over their last 10 shows that Florida's not given up. And Anaheim's playing spoiler. Uh, scoring over their last 10 games, Huberto, 6 goals, 10 assists. Uh, Barkov, 5 goals, 12 assists. Hoffman with 6 goals, 4 assists. Dryden Hunt, uh, 2 goals, 3 assists. Borgstrom, 3 goals, 3 assists. Ekblad, a goal and six assists in Yandel with six assists for the Florida Panthers. On the Anaheim side of things, Getzlaff, two goals, three assists. Sprong, four goals and an assist. Raquel, two goals, four assists. Silverberg, five goals and four assists. Corey Perry, two, three goals and two assists in his last ten games. It's getting better. Uh, Manson with five assists and Johan Larson with three assists to round things out for uh, Jacob Larson, sorry, for uh, Anaheim. Uh, goaltenders, why not Montembeau? Why not? He's 4-0-1 now with a 906 save percentage. Luongo's 0-2-3 in their last 10 with an 897 save percentage. So why not go with the kid? Um, on the Anaheim side of things, I expect Gibson. He's 4-2 in their last 10 with a 928 save percentage. Ryan Miller, 1-3 with an 869 save percentage. So I would expect Gibson here because Anaheim's still trying to win some games. And uh, just make things interesting down the stretch. And just as a Canuck fan, if they win and the Canucks lose in regulation, they jump past Vancouver in the standings. Now, they've played more games than have Vancouver, but just throwing that out there. Because <clears throat> I know there's Duck fans that are like, wait, are we playing our way out of a good draft pick? Possibly, yes. That is potentially possible. And Vancouver did it last year. Where, while I like Quinn Hughes, I like who they drafted, they definitely played their way out of what could have been a better draft pick. So, we'll we'll see if anybody does that this year. That being said, and moving along, last game on the board is Edmonton and Vegas. So, here we go. Oh, Anaheim won the one meeting they had with Florida this year. Uh, Edmonton and Vegas. The Oilers haven't given up. They haven't. And they showed that again tonight with a very gutsy road win against the Arizona Coyotes. At the very least, McDavid hasn't given up. So while the rest of the Oilers might be passengers to what Leon Dreisaitl and Connor McDavid are doing, 
They have not, they've clearly not given up on a playoff spot. The team is now 32, 32, and 7. Vegas is 39, 27, and 5. Uh, Vegas has had a very decent schedule for themselves over the last while, and they've had a bit of a rest before t- before tomorrow night's game. Um, in their last 10, Edmonton is 6-3-1. and one. They won their last game, of course, tonight against Arizona, whereas Vegas is 7-2-1, and one, and they won their last game as well. On the road, the Oilers are 16-15-5 and five at home. Vegas is 21-10-4. So while we can look and say, well, Vegas isn't as good at home as they were last year, true, but they still have an excellent home record. Scoring over their last 10, McDavid has four goals and 14 assists. Dreisaitl, six goals, 10 assists. Chase on with three goals, three assists. Nugent Hopkins, three goals. Gagne with two goals and two assists. Nurse, a goal and five assists. And Matthew Benning suddenly scoring from the blue line, three goals and two assists for him in their last 10 games. <clears throat> on the Vegas side for scoring, Smith, five goals and five assists over their last 10 games. Stastny, two goals and eight assists. Stone with two goals and four assists. Tuck <clears throat> also has two goals and four assists. Pacioretty, four goals, two assists. Schmidt, three goals and three assists. And Theodore, two goals and five assists on the blue line for the Vegas Golden Knights. Goaltending, Koskinen played tonight. Can Koskinen play tomorrow for $4.5 million next year? I'll say probably. He's 6-2-1 in their last 10 with a 9.23 save percentage. Stolars with a loss in the one game he played with a 9.09 save percentage. I expect Flurry because I expect Flurry every night. <clears throat> He's 6-1-1 in their last 10 games with a 9.50 save percentage. Subban is 1-1 with an 8.59 save percentage over that same period of time. So for Vegas, it's all about playing well going into the playoffs. And not only that, but while the odds of Arizona catching them is slim, you don't want to give Arizona daylight. And you don't want to end up in a position where going into the last couple weeks of the season, you're like, hey, we're only three points ahead of Arizona. Three, four, maybe two. So uh, for, for Vegas, they're still important games, even if it looks like they aren't. And for Edmonton, they have to win every game. They can't afford to lose or they're done. So a win tomorrow night in Vegas, it's, it's every, it, they've been saying it for weeks, every game's the playoffs for Edmonton. For Vegas, they're already playing like it's playoff hockey. Should be a pretty uh, interesting matchup. Look for Lucic and Ryan Reeves to potentially get into it. Could be a big game. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Once again, happy St. Patrick's Day. I'll talk to you again soon.